we find that there's the highest demand for our products when there's confidence, when business owners are confident in the macroeconomic environment that they find themselves in and they want to invest. And so from a business owner's perspective, I think it's important to think about how you're investing that capital and ensuring that it's going to bring that return. Hi, everybody. I'm Ashoka Mimona, and I'm here today as your host for an interview with David Jens, the founder and CEO of Merchant Growth, a leading Canadian fintech company that specializes in small business financing. Hi, David. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you? Good. I'm well myself, and I'm very excited to speak to you because I know you're, you know, you're a seasoned entrepreneur. You've been in multiple news stories I've read, so I'm very curious about your journey and your journey specifically to launch Merchant Growth, and I'm sure that our viewers will learn a lot from you. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about you first, because I think that's sort of natural transition into Merchant Growth itself. So perhaps tell our viewers about your own professional entrepreneurial journey and what sort of motivated you to get into the business financing space and launch Merchant Growth. Absolutely. I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. My father, brother, and uncle all had their own companies. And I grew up around the highs and lows that come with that, you know, the long hours that sometimes come up, the challenges, but also the rewards of, you know, working for yourself and making something happen. That inspired me to want to become an entrepreneur myself. And it taught me a fair bit. I went to UBC, studied finance. And through that, I got a job in the investment world. I worked at a private equity firm working on what they call mid-market private equity transactions. So we were buying private companies and that was a great learning experience. I got to really understand the nuts and bolts of a business, the financials, how to model a business and understand what drives a business and how to structure investments, how to raise capital, so on and so forth. So that was a great intro. And it was during that time at the private equity firm that I had read about this industry that was growing in the US of alternative financing, what we would call fintech now, but this was, you know, 2009, so it was called alternative finance or in particular for small business, it was called merchant cash advance. And I was intrigued because I learned just how difficult it was for small businesses to get funding from traditional sources. I learned about technology's role in creating a more convenient experience for borrowers. And I was just fascinated by it. And so that's how, you know, the business plan, you know, got written and off the ground. And before I knew it, we started funding loans and kind of growing it a step at a time from there. Well, that's fantastic. And I think that's a great segue into talking about merchant growth itself. So I'll let you take the mic and really lead the discussion itself. But I think it's good to give our viewers a sense of how merchant growth works, what its mission is, and really to set it apart from counterparts in this space, as you mentioned, the alternative lending space. Absolutely. Merchant growth's mission is to bring Canadian business owners the most convenient and accessible financing experience. I talked earlier about my family members running their own companies and the long hours and the stress and so forth. And now as an entrepreneur myself, I've experienced it too, where you're wearing a lot of different hats. It's stressful, it's busy. And creating that convenient and accessible experience when seeking credit, it's a huge load off of a business owner's shoulders to know that that's there and to have a friendly, transparent and convenient option there. That's a click away that'll allow them to you know, manage their cash and, and invest in their business at critical points in time. That's what our mission is all about. And we started out with you know, one product essentially, but now we've got a whole suite of products from you know, variable payment credit options where a business owner repays a percentage of sales or term loans and uh, revolving lines of credit. So our team is trained to go through a number of different options with business owners in order to tailor it to their specific needs, depending on you know if they're investing in a longer term asset or if it's a very short term need or, or whatnot and help them keep their costs low, but ultimately making sure it's also easy to understand and convenient. 
Great. And you mentioned the number of products. If you don't mind giving an overview of some of the products and perhaps even approaching this as if you're talking, you know, over a beer with a business owner and this person's contemplating financing options. So how would the different products work for this specific business owner? So one of the ways, if there's a a specific amount of capital that's needed for a specific purpose, like a bulk inventory purchase or the startup cost for a new location, then what we can do is provide an upfront advance to the business. And that can be in the form of a loan and they make fixed payments, daily or weekly fixed payments for a period of six to 18 months, depending on what their needs are. And another way to do it is through what I mentioned earlier, that variable payment option where they could pay a percentage of sales. That works really great for seasonal businesses who might not want to pay as much of a payment during their slow season. And then if it's more of a having some capital available, we've got our line of credit product and that functions just like a a line of credit product would at a bank, except for the fact that it's much easier to obtain and very convenient to use. You know, you log into a portal and schedule draws and repayments as it fits your business. So those are the main products we currently offer small businesses. All right. And I was looking a little bit into this. Uh, If you don't mind letting us know a little bit about the Merchant Growth Opportunities Fund. Yeah. So the Merchant Opportunities Fund, that's a funding vehicle that we put together in order to fund the portfolio that Merchant Growth was originating. We decided to split our business in that way, where we've got the operating company of Merchant Growth and the funding coming from Merchant Opportunities Fund. There's a number of reasons why we decided to do that. We felt it would be the best way to scale our business. And so the Merchant Opportunities Fund, there's a number of investors that invest in that fund. In fact, it's a couple hundred investors now. And it also has financing with the Canadian bank. And so for the first six, seven years in the fund's life, it just funded that merchant growth portfolio. But in the last five years or so, it's also supported some other really great Canadian fintechs in consumer and small business finance. So we we came to the realization we've got this funding vehicle with a track record and a dedicated group of investors. And it made sense to open that up more broadly to the Canadian fintech industry. All right. So I know that, you know, you're immersed in the small business lending scene. You work with a lot of small business owners. So I think this is a great opportunity to ask you some tips you may have for, you know, business owners who are watching in. So let's perhaps start with um, reasons why one would take out a loan or any type of financing. Oftentimes, you know, I think a lot of business owners may consider this, but then put it on the back burner because they don't really know about the options out there. So if you could just lay out the various reasons one might need financing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see a whole host of different reasons why small businesses use our products. They tend to be for growth-oriented purposes, as opposed to, you know, temporary band-aids due to some cash flow gap that occurs. Although sometimes that does happen in business and, you know, a payment comes up that you weren't expecting or some equipment breaks down and you need to quickly finance a replacement. So we will help out in those situations as well. But you know, speaking in terms of what we see our customers doing, they're generally investing in their business. And so we find that there's the highest demand for our products when there's confidence, when business owners are confident in the macroeconomic environment that they find themselves in and they want to invest. And so from a business owner's perspective, I think it's important to think about how you're investing that capital and ensuring that it's going to bring that return. I think that small businesses do find themselves in a position often where there's a really high return opportunity on, you know, some inventory they can buy or some expansion they can do. And they're sometimes pretty low risk opportunities. They know they can flip that product, but they just need quick, convenient capital to do so. And that's the best type of scenario that makes the most sense for our credit products. But There's a host of reasons why a business might need cash, and it's usually has to do with growth. Okay. So let's say that this business owner knows that he needs capital and is now on the hunt for financing. What are your sort of top tips for this person to look out for, be mindful of while they're sort of scanning the market and what should they keep in mind? even in terms of getting qualified. So that's a second part question, but let's start with what are sort of the top tips that you have for someone who's scanning their market for capital opportunities? I would say to spend a little bit of time 
understanding the options that are out there. I think, you know, just taking the first option or let's say you get solicited through a piece of marketing and it piques your interest, you know, it's worth doing some research because every company is a little bit different. And it's hard to tell if, if financing is not, you know, your expertise, which in many cases won't be business owners are an expert in whatever their their business provides. It's not not necessarily financing. And so I recognize that it's difficult, but I would read some reviews, make sure it's a company that is reputable and is transparent in the way that it operates, that it you know doesn't have hidden fees in the contracts or any any kind of surprises like that. I would say, you know, at least do a quick scan of the the funding agreement before you you hit the signature box. And we really pride ourselves on having very simple legal agreements and easy to understand financing options with no hidden fees. But not all companies have that approach. And so it's important to do your research. Perfect. And in terms of getting qualified, what should uh, business owners, startups keep in mind when they're looking to get qualified? I think that it is important to manage your cash the best you can. A lot of the fintech companies out there are using algorithms that look at your bank transaction data as at least one of the main inputs in making their credit decision. And so check into your bank account daily and, and make sure you're managing your cash well, because that will ultimately score you in a better credit category with the fintechs you're applying for. I would also say that a small business that does really well by its customers that will show up in things like online reviews and a lot of algorithms these days will look at those as well. So, you know, manage your online reputation as well. It will help and be forthright with any uh, answers to questions that to the extent that an underwriter or someone on the risk team from any of these companies has questions, you know, be very fulsome in, in your answers. I think that also helps. And in terms of things to avoid, you touched on this a little bit, David, but when one is taking out a loan or any type of financing, what should one be uh, wary of or avoid? I think a, a few things. I said earlier, you know, you want to have a clear idea of what you're using the funds for. And you don't want to be maximizing the amount of credit you're taking out just because it happens to be available. It's important that it's invested in opportunities that yield returns. So that's that's sort of a very basic, probably overly basic sort of statement, but nonetheless important. I would say that make sure that you do a forward-looking forecast, cash flow forecast, and understand your anticipated revenues and expenses and, and your ability to make payments on any kind of financing that you take out, whether business or personal for that matter. And so that's also important. But uh, most importantly, invest it in a way that yields a return and, and puts your business ahead. All right. So that's sort of your tips for business owners. And feel free, you know, if you feel like we've missed anything or any other advice that you may want to give, and we can get back to this later on in the conversation. But another area I wanted to touch on was the state of the industry itself. And, you know, you being at, at the top of your company, I mean, you have a bird's eye view of not just how things are operating at your company, but sort of across the industry. So I don't know if you wanted to speak to any trends or innovations that you've been seeing on the ground. And I'm sure there have been challenges as well. And we can touch on that. But just in terms of how the industry has shifted, I know you've been in it for a number of years. I'm sure, I mean, you even mentioned like semantics, you know, changing from alternative financing to fintech. So what are some changes you've noticed, particularly, I guess, in the last five years? I would say in the last five years, it's become customary to have a lot of automation. All right. And I talked about our mission of bringing the most convenient and accessible financing experience to small business owners. Technology is at the center of that. Computers are just faster than people are. And, and we can get a credit decision out instantly and a funding offer out instantly. And as a result, fund businesses same day with really not a lot of time required from the business owner to go through that process. And so that I would say, you know, across the whole industry, there's innovation happening. I would say that, you know, more recently, in the last couple of years, of course, we faced the pandemic. And when it comes to small business credit appetite, through some dramatic shifts over the last couple of years, when the pandemic hit, you know, the appetite for credit went way down for most businesses because like I said earlier, 
credit demand comes from confidence. When you see an ability to invest in your business, move it forward, that's when you're going to want credit. And that's what we see in our own business as a provider of that credit. But you know, when the pandemic hit, that created uncertainty, that lowered the demand. And then the government came in with a lot of stimulus, which further supported the small business sector, which is fantastic. But that also further reduced demand for credit from the fintech industry. And so that was uh, you know, disruptive. And it, really what we did was we took that time to focus on our operations and our technology and really automate as much of it as we can because we know that the market's coming back. And it is, and we see that today as we're, you know, not quite all the way through the pandemic, but getting through it. And so that confidence is coming back and we want to make sure that we're in the best position possible to deliver that credit to small businesses and support the sector. So I can't really talk about the last five years without really mentioning that pandemic impact because it was so significant. But, you know, I think that through every challenge, there's an opportunity. And so we were excited about the next few years. I think it's going to be a time of a massive rebound in small businesses coming back, and we're already seeing it. Okay, and I, that's exactly what I was going to ask. If you've seen the demand for capital go up in the last few months, because I mean, I've been hearing things here and there and reading things here and there, but it seems like the tide is shifting. Absolutely. The trend is definitely positive. So, you know, for what it's worth, it, it feels like we're getting close to the finish line. Fingers crossed. Exactly. That's the hope everywhere across this country. And I mean, beyond in terms of challenges, I mean, you mentioned challenges, business owners and um, fintech industry has um, encountered through COVID, but just general challenges that you've seen. um, I mean, you can specify it to COVID pandemic if you want, but just generally what are challenges that business owners experience when they're looking to get approved for credit and perhaps how they can overcome those barriers? Yeah, I think that the biggest challenge we see time and time again, and you know, maybe um, at the risk of kind of repeating what I mentioned earlier, but it's just around business owners being time strapped and busy and wanting to get back to the, running their business. That's at the end of the day, we're we're all you know busy and juggling things, right? But uh, you know, especially a small business owner, because they wear so many different hats, so they're pulled in so many different directions, and that's really difficult. And so. That challenge kind of, you know, never goes away. If you choose that life to be a business owner, that's what your existence is going to be like. But, you know, going with convenient tech enabled financial services will reduce the amount of headache and administrative challenges associated with that sort of back office part of the business so that you can get back to, you know, creating value for your customers. All right. I know you mentioned innovations in the industry itself. And earlier we were talking about algorithms. Do you feel that there's still room to improve the boring experience from a tech perspective? I do. I think that it can still get more automated and it can become even easier for borrowers. I think that that's a big challenge that no single industry player can tackle. It requires an open banking framework in the country that is still kind of lacking. So, you know, those trends are happening globally and, and they're going to continue. So I think that innovation will certainly continue. And eventually it really will be, you know, provide permission to pull a few data points and, you know, a few clicks of a button later and you're fully financed. I think that we're headed that way, uh, but we're not quite there. So innovation there for sure. And I think also in terms of the the credit products themselves, how and when they're made available, and you know how you interact with them and so on is, is going to continue to improve as well. So I wouldn't say that you know we're done by any stretch on the innovation front. And do you see any trends in the forecast? You could even speak to what sort of next for you and merchant growth or just generally in the industry. I know I've noticed at least from my vantage point talking to a lot of people in you know similar shoes that there has been growth beyond Canada and you know a lot of alternative lenders in Canada moving. South and I think a lot of changes in the U.S., which definitely prompts changes. I think north of the border, but I don't know if you can speak to any trends that you've seen. I would say that a lot of folks in the small business credit space are innovating and and pivoting to in in some cases pivoting dramatically. When describing our company and our strategy, I would say that we are 
building new products, but we believe in the value proposition and of our core products. And so we're here to stay as small business lenders, but we are innovating and creating some new products and that I look forward to, you know, reaching out to you guys in due course once those are ready for further discussion. But uh, we're all trying to add more value to the small business customer. And that's great for small businesses, right? And there's a lot of different ways we think we might be able to do that, given our expertise, our knowledge and our tech teams and so forth. I know I'm excited to hear uh, from you again about those upcoming products. I know you've shared a lot of, of good advice. I don't know if you have just general advice, you know, as someone who started as an entrepreneur yourself, in terms of if one were looking to grow their business or even young entrepreneurs, you know, who are thinking about starting a business and nervous about taking the plunge, what advice and tips do you have for them? So this was actually a piece of advice my, my older brother gave me when I was thinking about my own career and deciding to do my own business. And uh, his advice was the sooner you start, the better. And that's kind of what I did. I started Merchant Growth at age 22. And I think that's right. You know, there's never a perfect time. There's always an excuse for why now's not the right time. And it's never too late. Also, if you know, there's a lot of different stories out there, entrepreneurial success, and they started at different points in their lives. But Quite a few of those stories start young, and you know, the longer you have, the more uh, you can build, right? And things take time to build. So, you know, I do believe that the earlier you get going, the better, and just go for it. Perfect. I think that's excellent advice. Thank you so much, David, for your time today. Is there anything we did not touch on that you wanted to to speak to briefly about merchant growth or anything else? I think that was great. Thanks for having me on here, and uh, you know, look forward to supporting many of the small business owners that you know might be on the smarter loans platform and so forth exactly all right thank you so much and all the best to you all right you too all right take care bye